So here we are at the homily. And here we are, all quarantined in our homes. By the way, quarantine is from the Italian quarantine, which is the period of time that a widow who had 40 days to live in her deceased husband's house before it was seized for debt. And later it became a 40-day period of time that a ship suspected of harboring disease remained in isolation because they believed that the disease would run its course and be safe after 40 days. Now it just means a period of sequestering. Interesting that we are in a period of 40 days. This is the 22nd day in Lent. And actually today is Sunday, so it's a Sunday in Lent and doesn't count as a day of Lent. But nonetheless, we're 20 days, 22 days into Lent. So we are in a double Lent of sorts, of quarantine and Lent, or as I like to call it, benching. Today's Gospel from John, the story of the man born blind, is truly incredibly topical. Who sinned? The man? His parents? Or in our case, the Chinese? The U.S. authorities? Maybe it was God. As humans, we have to find a reason for what happens around us. We always say to others, explain yourself, and we hear them say it to us as well. How can an all-loving, all-knowing, and all-powerful God allow totally undeserved suffering to exist in the world that God created and God loves? The disciples questioned Jesus. They asked him, who was was the one who sinned to cause this man to be born blind, blind? Traditional answers in Jesus' tradition had been that tragedies such as this are a case of God visiting the sins of the parents on the children. It says so in Numbers 14, 18 and Deuteronomy 5, 9. They say the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Later thinkers in Israel specifically denied this. Jeremiah in 31, 29 and Ezekiel in 18, 2 were specific issues of this this, uh, expression. God doesn't skip generations. God treats people as individuals, not as heirs of someone else's sin. So then, aha, a child could sin in the womb, they said. That's weird. A topical example that I just experienced this week before we were fully quarantined was encountering at a family get-together a girl with a huge bruise and scab on her face. Who did this to her? Her parents? Then it's child abuse. Perhaps she was careless. Well, what a fault-filled child. We found out it was the neighbor's dog. Call the lawyer, file a lawsuit. Oh, she teased the dog and been warned not to do so. Well, then God allowed it. Or maybe it was free will on the part of the child and the part of the dog. But she was treated with tenderness. She was carefully cleaned and held, gently reminded to be caring with animals. And as a result, she has no fear of the dog. In fact, as I observed her playing right next to him in the yard two days later. So who did what? Jesus does not respond directly to the disciples' questions. He instead says two more things. Though the man was born blind, the works of God can be made manifest. Don't look for God at the beginning of a crisis or a tragedy. God doesn't cause pandemics or cancer or birth defects or earthquakes or strokes or car wrecks, dementia or blindness. Look for God in the middle of the mess. God is working there to bring forth something new, not necessarily a fix, but something that transforms it, that redeems it. This God has wounds on his hands and feet and side. This God remembers the suffering and shares our pain and takes it to himself in his compassion. Secondly, Jesus says, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. We must work. A call to reach out and care, to discover, to bring and to share the presence of God in the heart of the tragedy. To set up a love chain in a parish, to contact everyone and assess needs, to learn new ways to communicate, 
to share over previously unexplored, unexplored venues, to stretch, to reach, to partner with God. Some of these thoughts I've shared with you are from the Reverend James Liggett from Midland, Texas, who wrote a sermon that I read this week. And some are from my own strange brain. I hope that you'll leave this, read the spiritual thoughts that we put out this week uh, with the news from the pews and see some other thoughts that connect very well with this sermon. Amen. Let us say together now the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needful, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.